Good afternoon. Welcome to Smart Trucking Live. Glad once again all you could join us. Trucker Hershey. Hello, Trucker Hershey. Kelly Patterson's here. He's at home after what sounds like an extended stay on the road, nine weeks out. James Cheeks is here. Welcome. Grilled Mortal is here. I saw him somewhere <laughs> become an owner-operator of an aluminum boat with a nice Merc. Good advice. <laughs> Marjan's here. Tim Fields here. Muppet's here. Hey, Dave. Hey, Muppet, how's, how's it going? Cuban 960 is here. Cubano 960, I'm sorry. Uh, Barry Harberson's here. Alan Johnson's here. Kisselute is here. Hamish K joining us from the UK. Good evening, sir. There's SoCal. Hey, SoCal. Glad you could make it. Andrew Pfeiffer's here. The gang's all collecting. Shannon's here. Hey, Shannon. Glad you could join us. Matt Roberts is here. Jesse Sager, Sager is here. Thunderstorm87 is here. Keith Robinson, Ford F100 is here. Hey, Dave. Hey, Ford F150. Dana Penrose is here. Jeff Sutton is here. Dana, Dana Penrose, Alabama. Jeff Sutton. From, oh, from Gravenhurst. Jeff Sutton. I think I knew that from before. Yes, Kathy was just pointing that out to me. A local man. A local guy. Good to, good to see you. Michael's here. Adel, Adel, Seal? Adel Seal Rodriguez? Hello to you, sir. Mike Waller. Shazia Yazer is here. Uh, hello from the other side of the world in Pakistan. That is, that is pretty much about halfway around, I would say. That's a long way. Thank uh, you for joining us. Adam Bennett. Sorry, I had to wait for him to run out of wind there. Thank you very much for the generous donation. Once again, my man. It says, love you guys. And I already saw that SoCal saw that you uh, that you acknowledged him there. Thank you very much for the 50 bomb there, Adam. Thank it's you. It's a bomb. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Well, it's an interesting topic this week, and as who was it that, that noted early on in the conversation they don't believe anything that Biden says, but he got his new infrastructure bill passed, his $1.2 trillion bill passed, and some of that money is to go toward the trucking industry. So they've broken it down into different sections of the trucking industry that uh, they're going to put money into and some of the things they want to do in the trucking industry to, to change it or improve it. And I thought that's, that's exactly what we'll talk about today. And, and the first one is, which I, I found was an interesting priority, that they were going to finalize the rule on the hours of service exemption for livestock haulers. So basically what that means is the livestock guys, the bull rack guys, don't really need ELDs. They don't need to run log books. They can just run till they drop because, and you can you can understand that that side of it because the livestock, you know, is standing up in that trailer that whole time it's traveling. It's very hard on them. It's very cruel. So you can understand why they, you know, they don't want them sitting around. They want those guys to get that stuff delivered right away as soon as they possibly can. But it'll be interesting to see now that they finalize that if. Tens of thousands of guys all of a sudden don't want to get into hauling bull racks and stuff like that because I think I think that'll attract an awful lot of drivers into the livestock industry. I, I truly do. And it's interesting too. I, and I, I want your feedback on this stuff about what you think about all of these things. Like what do you what do you guys think about the, the livestock haulers being exempt? I, I want your opinions on this. And it's 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 interesting that you know, for everybody else, uh, they would have to run teams in a situation like that. And they didn't even talk about making the bull rack guys having to run teams. They just automatically had, had dropped, uh, dropped the rules for them, and that was just the way it was, and that's the way they're going. And I, I thought it was curious that they didn't, uh, they didn't even talk about running teams for the, for the livestock. So I, I thought that was an interesting development from the Biden administration. Uh, you know, and it's it's a it's a boon to the bull rock guys and and most of those guys are pretty seasoned veterans. There's there's very few if any rookies running bull racks. It's a tough tough way to truck. It's, you know, 
it's tough trucking. So there aren't any rookies really in bull rack hauling. Those guys are all pretty much experienced hands and good drivers. But uh, interesting that they've exempted them from the rules. What do you guys think about that? I want to know. Aldicio Rodriguez, my man, coming in with the five beans. Thank you very much for the donation, my friend. Andy, Andy Light, when truckers are allowed to run till they die, then companies will demand that they run till they die. Huh, interesting observation. Huh, interesting. I got I to gotta chew on that one for a minute. That's a good point. Uh, Ford F100, I think livestock haulers should get a break and haul as long as they need to. They're fed on hate for dispatch and, and magic toothpick anyway. I've seen them, those guys stay up four days in a row. Yeah, when I used to run uh, Reefer, I would see some of the livestock guys that ran Western Canada back and forth here. And those guys would literally be up for days trying to get in as quickly as they possibly could. Marjan says they need to allow food and medical transport to have longer hours of service. Uh, delivery times are bad. Now you bring up a valid point there for the medical equipment. They've had an exemption through this pandemic, but will that exemption now continue now that they consider that the pandemic is, has passed? And for medical supplies, I think it should. But, it, you know, there's no mention of them in this, in this new bill. Adam Pennant, once again, oh my lord, you're going to break something putting in numbers like that. Another 50 bond, thank you so much for the generosity, my friend. From Portland to Fontana, California, $2,100, worth the rate he wants to know. Thank you very much for the generous donations, Adam. I'd, I'd want to I'd wanna run that mileage on the PC miler, Adam, but I would say off the top of my head, if that's just dry freight, I'd like to know what kind of freight that involves. But that sounds like a reasonable rate, but I'd still like to know what kind of freight we're running, whether you know whether you got to run the reefer trailer or something like that to do it. But and, and I'd I'd want to check the mileage first before I'd call it. Thank you for the donation. Can one of you guys? Yeah, it's an Amazon load. So oh, it'll be dry freight load. Can one of you guys run the miles for that? No, we don't we don't have that ability here. Huh. It's a thousand pounds shy of a thousand miles. Oh, so it's it's not even a thousand miles? No. Yeah, for an Amazon dry freight load, yeah. I think that's a reasonable no rate. Touch. Yeah, no touch freight, obviously. I, yeah, Amazon is almost always drop and hook. Yep. So he's he's two bucks a mile for a, a drop and hook. And they're providing the trailer? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jordan, back to the bull rack guys. He says, I think it's good those guys got to go once they get loaded. So, yeah, you can you can certainly understand the urgency. DeAndre says some bull, haul, bull haulers do run teams. Well, that's, you know, I can't, I can't honestly say I've ever encountered any. The occasional husband and wife team. But, yeah, that's, that's good, too. And some of those bull rack guys run, like, long, long distance runs. What is your take on the situation on the West Coast containers, Mark Ray? That, that is a multifaceted topic, that is. I don't, I don't think that Biden's going to be able to do anything about that, frankly. I, I, you know, I know he's, he's talking the talk. He won't be able to walk the walk. The beef industry must have made a good contribution to the cause. Matthew Pesco. Yeah, you know, it's like Matthew's right. It's all about money. So you wonder where the money was for the Biden administration in, in passing that exemption because, uh, you know, the FMCSA probably was against that, for instance. But there's been some, there's been some, uh, some pull there, obviously, from, from somewhere to get an exemption like that. And and hey, Fred's here for in Battle Creek, Michigan. And you can you can understand, you know, not there's a big thing about you know, not wanting to be cruel to animals. So you can certainly understand the big push there from from everyone. So interesting, interesting uh, exemption. I thought anyway. The the second um, 
thing that the that the Biden administration wants to fund are um, he wants to ad- advocate for automatic emergency braking performance requirements on all the new trucks that are going to be manufactured from a certain date forward. And I, I'd like to jump right in there and say, I don't think that's a good idea at all. Tim Field had a cattle rack comment here. The, the cattle drivers out there in, in uh, Colorado suck. <laughs> they block us on purpose when we, when we come in to drop and hook. <laughs> Tim Field having, having a nasty experience or two with the bull rack guys. <laughs> But anyway, I haven't talked to anyone that I know personally that cares for these automatic uh, emergency braking systems. And I've got one in, in my car. It, isn't, it doesn't actually hit the brake on me, thank God, but it'll, it'll put up a, a heads-up display right across the windshield with a big brake, brake light. And it's, it's inaccurate 75% of the time. So if they're basing, you know, it's all about the technology. They don't have the technology yet. I'm absolutely against that, but you just know there's political money flying around there to to make that part of their mandate. To get that, you know, there'll be big players like Bendix selling that stuff that just, you know, they of course they want it mandated. They'll make billions off it. Martin says the automatic braking will be its own disaster in the making. Yeah, I agree. Automatic braking on glare ice, for instance, you watch that happen a couple of times, and it'll happen. It'll happen. I think that's a crazy idea. Automatic brakes are dangerous on slick roads going to get people killed. That's from Kelly Patterson. I agree. I think that's one of the dumbest things that they could put money into and mandate. I just, but there's, there's the disconnect between politicians and reality and big, big companies, big money manufacturing companies and the actual people that drive the trucks. There's a huge disconnect. It's getting worse every day. And there's there's a perfect example of that. I think that's insane. Kisselud says, I don't want my truck or car to do anything without my permission. I did. I agree. I did a video a, a while back on, on letting the driver drive the truck. I am not in favor of the automatic equipment doing everything for you. I think for all sorts of reasons. One person pointed out to me they thought it, it bred lazier drivers, and I hadn't even thought of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was correct. But if, if, if you can't find, if your drivers aren't hitting the brakes or knowing when to hit the brakes and having accidents and stuff like that, you've got the wrong drivers. You can't be relying on, on these plastic throwaway trucks to be able to, to do all the safety thinking for them. Matthew says, the auto brakes, uh, my company will go on after someone turns into a driveway. <laughs> yeah, that's handy. Yeah, so what he's saying is when the vehicle's out of the road, then the automatic braking activates. Perfectly useless technology at this stage of the game. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, probably get better with it, but they're a long way away. Hamish K coming in with the five pounds. My man, thank you very much for that. Bull hauling sounds interesting, he says. <laughs> Thanks, Hamish. It's, uh, God, the, the, guy that, the guy that taught me to drive was a bull rat guy, an old bull rat guy. And he was an excellent driver, but he had some, had some horrific stories of staying up for days at a time. And I didn't, and cleaning the trailers, that wasn't for me. Dave, did you see this? Massachusetts towns offer snowplow drivers up to $310 an hour, fearing that the labor shortage may force winter school delays. Shannon, I remember, and you'll probably remember too, the problem they had last winter through COVID, finding snowplow guys, and everything got all banged up. And that's that's probably why they're offering the big money. But, huh, yeah, yeah, they don't want that to happen two winters in a row. Interesting stuff. This trucking life says it's just like the United States government to not blame the not blame the person responsible, but the tool he used instead. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, the trucking life. That's yeah, you've nailed that one on the head. Fred says the more automated trucks are, the more unprofessional drivers will be st- steering these trucks. Yeah, that's that's that was the point I was trying to make a minute ago, be- because. If, if, you, if you rely on the equipment to make all the safe decisions, you're going to be a sorry boy. 
you're going to be a sorry boy sooner or later. And it breeds, you know, it breeds distracted driving because you think, oh, the truck's, the truck's in control. I can uh, kick back and watch a movie or something or read a novel. It's crazy thinking. But it's all to compensate for these people now that they have to hire that can't drive because they don't pay enough to get good people. So that's my take on that. Uh, here's, here's one that uh, I'm sure you guys will have some input. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says automatic systems are making people's brains, turning brains, people's brains into mush. John M. says the situation is dangerous all, all around. See if they give these manufacturers immunity when these systems fail. Yeah, and he's, yeah you, you know they won't. You, you know they won't go after the manufacturers. It'll be anybody else's fault but theirs. And they'll have their money and they'll be, they'll be off to the races anyway. YouTube Outlaw. I'm sure auto braking will work beautifully. They can't even keep up with those electronic parts in, in stock to keep the trucks running. Now they will be down with no brakes too. And yeah, meaning the part shortage will affect the automatic braking systems, the modules, they were calling them the other day. They were interviewing uh, one of Volvo's big wheels at a conference, and they were saying, oh, my Volvo is breaking down all the time. It's always these modules. And Volvo's defense was, oh, we don't make the modules, so it's not our fault. <laughs> I thought, yeah. So I, I wasn't very impressed with Volvo's response to that. But something else that th they want to do, put money into, is mandating underride and side protection for all the new trailers coming out. And they may mandate it all on the existing trailers that are operating. I, I see now that the FMCSA is going to make part of their safety check for trailer will be to, to check the, um, the security of the ICC bumper to make sure it's in the right spot, to make sure it's properly braced, to make sure it's not rusting through. So this is, this is all um, a big protocol by the Biden administration to make sure that people can't that can't drive their cars very well don't get underneath the trailers that we're pulling because it seems to be up to us to pay for their shortfallings you know and, and there are yeah, there are times that cars will slide on the ice and slide underneath the trailer and yeah it would be nice to protect those those people so i can i can see both sides of it or if you're hauling a tanker with with the nozzles for unloading like a fuel tanker down hanging low and if a car wipes one of those out that's not a good thing. Uh, Garrett says, I jackknifed on a greasy dirt road when a deer ran out in front of me. I have a herd bumper for a reason. Auto emergency brakes almost killed me. Huh. Yeah, there, there are times when they're going to engage when you sure as hell don't want them to. But what do you think about this underride thing? You know, being from up north like, like I am here, there are times, and you guys will know this, there are times, especially with these, these bigger, longer trailers now, that the snow banks build up, the road gets more narrow, and to make a corner, you've got to hop a curve every once in a while. So when you mount the snow bank with the trailer tires, you're going to rip all that stuff off or get hung up on, on the underride protection stuff on a snow bank going around the corner. I can see that happening pretty easily. Uh, I, I remember having a having to hop snow banks in Golden, B.C. with a set of B-trains to get around some of those corners in town to deliver fuel. If I'd had underride protection, those trailers wouldn't have done it. Wouldn't have made the corner. I'd just be hanging there. So I don't, I don't know. Like, I can see both sides of that argument. Better catch up here. William Watts says, auto trucks were n will never fully take over because LTL pickup and delivery drivers unload and load all the freight all day. So this won't gar go very far, so he's not worried. Yeah, yeah, the automatic trucks aren't going to be able to unload themselves. Hey, there's Josh Bulldog. Anyone de did see Peterbilt lose sales due to their digital dash? I haven't seen any numbers on that, Josh. But, uh, y you know, you never know. It it's probably a look that everybody will get used to. I'm just not used to it yet. Hey, Roger Penske's here. Hey, Roger. New open yards, they're not part of the terminal array. Looks like they're being put out on this used railroad property for piling up empty containers. I went there last night to drop one off. So that's that's part of how they're digging into the 
into the port problem there is, is finding more real estate to, to place the containers. And I understand, too, now that they've, they're putting fines on carriers or customers that don't pick up their uh, containers in, uh, in a timely fashion. <laughs> SoCal, SoCal, SoCal says the, uh, George the Groundhog has joined the conversation. He's here. So SoCal must be back on his porch again. Uh, Kelly Patterson, I had to gun the throttle once to get out of a motel parking lot because the side skirts were hanging me up. That's just on the just on the tractor. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, there's, there's clearance allowances on a truck and a trailer for a reason, for an engineering reason, and now they're going to do away with all of that, and, and snow is going to be a big problem. Tim Field, I had a driver flip me off before because my truck got got tripped up by an overpass and slammed on the brakes. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Wow. Yeah. There's there's gonna be there's gonna be all sorts of problems with this. Uh, something else that the Biden administration is pouring money into is a review of all the ELD mandate um, data that they have captured. So they're gonna they're gonna sift through all that data now and, and see what lessons can be learned from that data. And, you know, if they're going to learn anything, they should be observing just how much free time truck drivers put in at loading docks, waiting and unloading and stuff like that, because that's, that's all on the ELDs. So, but, you know, that won't be their priority. They'll have some other goal in mind. But, but uh, that, that's something else they want to use this money for is to break down all the information captured by their ELDs and, and review that. So, uh, I don't know. Ford 100 says, live by the stick shift, die by the automatic. I, you know, there's something else. I don't know if you could have all that technology on a standard transmission truck, like automatic braking. I bet you can't even incorporate that stuff on the older trucks, which makes it, Another reason to want to stick with the older trucks. Matt Roberts, any new word on the per diem tax exemption for employees versus owner operators? I haven't, I haven't heard anything on that yet, Matt. Uh, Kisselude, if there's going to, if they're going to replace me with a computer, does that mean the computers will also be able to pay the bills and, and buy things? Uh, one, th one thing at a time. I, I don't think they'll go that far yet. Andrew Pfeiffer says, I find it's easy to get bored with just an automatic transmission. I can, I can believe that, too, especially if you're, think about it, if you're crossing Nebraska or Wyoming on I-80 and you're just sitting there looking around, I, I can believe that it would get a little, make you a little complacent. Kisselude, I'm going for my permit on the 24th. I hope I get my CDL before February. Kisselude, good luck, man. I'm sure you'll be fine, but uh, good luck to you there. Where are we here? So they're they're gonna anyway they're gonna review the data from capturing these ELDs. Something else that that I actually see as a positive step by the Biden administration administration, and this has been this has been brewing long before the Biden administration. But this was this was something that Trump was right into and in starting to investigate was um, having a closer look at at truck leasing practices in the industry because it's become such a problem because so many guys are getting beat and screwed by these truck leasing deals through their carriers that it's it's become it's become a serious issue so i'm i'm glad actually that's one of the few things they're they're sinking money into that i agree with so good to good to see that adam thank you very much for another five dollars there i see uh, kathy already answered your question though but thank you for the donation yes thank you appreciate that what do you what do you guys think of the truck leasing uh investigation i think Man, I think that's long overdue. I think the the carriers have it's been a crime. It's been a crime against drivers, frankly. I drivers have lost everything in some cases due to these leasing agreements. And we we get email like that a lot and it's 
it's obviously a problem. It's about time. It's long overdue that they addressed it. Yeah, Adam says that's good. But yeah, it's suburban stable. Uh, Biden mentioned dump trucks at all. Biden mentioned dump trucks at all, and how is he planning to move all of this infrastructure? That's that you know that has yet to be seen because Biden just likes to likes to paint the bigger picture and then hope it all happens. Like it's it's funny that an infrastructure bill would allow no money at all to improve the parking situation, which is one of trucking's biggest beefs. There's no not enough safe parking, and and there's no money to study all the unpaid hours that truck drivers work. That's just not a priority. Just not a priority for the Biden administration. Yeah, uh, the ELG says leasing is purely predatory. Well put. Couldn't have said that better myself. Uh, riding with Slick, does a company force you to lease a truck? In a lot of cases, they do. They'll, they'll phrase it differently. They'll say, well, you know, we don't really have any company positions open now. But we do have leasing options available, and we strongly recommend them. They, the drivers, the lease drivers, make far more money than the company drives drivers anyway. They say there's no trucks available. And they say there's no trucks available for company drivers, but we we've got truck. we have truck lease trucks available. AB five will eliminate uh, lease operators. Fred, that is that is the hope. Yeah, and anything anything to get rid of this lease operating program is a good thing in in my book so yeah i hope it does that daniel meredith coming in with the 20 palm thank you very much for that what i like and hate about mega carriers that i like getting my cdl and traveling the 48 states uh what i hate uh is being away for home uh being away from home for months at a time and cdl training was not that long thank you very much for the for the 20 bomb there, Daniel. Yes, thank you, Daniel. Do you have anything to uh, add uh, on what he said there? I've lost Daniel's comment. All right, we'll read it one more time for please, you guys. So please. the question was, well, it wasn't a question, sir. It was a statement. What I like and hate about mega carriers is that I like getting my CDL and traveling 48 states. What I hate about it is being uh, away from yeah. home from months at a time. CDL training was not that long either. Yeah, no, there there's some ups and downs to it. That's for sure. Some guys, some guys like you know traveling the country and the over the over the road stuff. But you are away from home, and it's a tough tough adjustment for an awful lot of people. And, you know, sometimes the regional work will satisfy someone like that. So, so yeah, there's, you know, it's, it's like anything. There's good and bad about it. But Hamish coming in with another five pounds. Thank you very much for that. They need more drivers to drive the manual Eaton Fuller trucks. Honestly, it's way more fun to row through the gears. Thank you very much for the five pounds, my man. Yeah, Hamish, I bl I agree with you there. It is more fun to roll through the gears. YouTube Outlaw, a lease purchase is a tool for you to use. If you lose everything in a lease purchase, you are the one to blame. You had the wrong mindset. A lease truck is nothing more than a rental. I agree. I agree. There, you know, there are there are very few cases where the lease actually works out, and the driver follows it. To, through to fruition and he ends up with the truck very 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 few cases like that it's so slim that 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 that's why i i'm against lease operating i don't i don't think it should be allowed by the carriers what else have we got going on here <laughs> this is this is something i didn't understand uh, they're they're putting money into a motor carrier safety advisory committee for small business truckers. A safety advisory committee for small business truckers. Now, in my experience, it's always been the smaller carriers that operated more safely than the great big carriers. But 
you know, there's 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 the ATA at work right there trying to trying to trying to help out the little guy. Yeah, right. That's 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 crap. That's pathetic. The Safety Advisory Committee for Small Business Truckers. You know, even even the the stats are twisted on on that the CVSA stats because the bigger the carrier you are carrier you are the more trailers that you have the lower your ratio is for being found um, unsafe it waters down your stats so the bigger carriers with the worst safety records have have watered down stats it's such a it's such a crock and then to offer money for a safety advisory committee for the for the little guys. Just now, there's some there's some political bull and crap right right there, and you can tell that's coming from the ATA. So something else they want to do, they want to put money into a truck crash study. Well, that shouldn't take too long because we already know through many 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 studies and surveys that the truck causes only about 10% of the accidents, 10, 12% of the accidents at best anyway. It's all triggered by the four-wheelers. The four-wheelers are causing the accidents. So how long should that study take? They've got dozens of studies that went on before that that advise them of that fact alone. That Those stats aren't going to change. They may go up and down a little as more new drivers get into the industry, but the trucks are always safer than the cars. And so there's... There is a waste of God, you know, and they didn't break down how many millions or billions they're going to spend in each one of these categories. But they should probably donate about, put in about 500 bucks for that, take one guy about 15 minutes worth of research, and they'd have the answer to that. What a, you know, but, oh, they'll, oh that'll be a three-year investigation. Just, God, they can burn through money. It's stupid. Thunderstorm 87, what really is the benefit of a lease purchase? It, it, it benefits the carrier. It does not benefit the guy that's leased the truck in almost 100% of the cases. The idea is that, you know, after a while, the, that the guy that leased the truck ends up owning it outright, only that rarely happens. And the leases are extended over seven years, a lot of them now, and the truck is breaking down after three or four. So between the, the lease payment, which is huge, and the maintenance bills, which are huge, it, it causes these guys to go broke. So the and in the mean meantime, the carrier has benefited from all the freight that this guy's hauled, and not having to buy a company truck because the lease operators paid for the truck. So it's just a just a huge scam. Daniel Meredith, thank you very much for the five. Sometimes I have to wait a really long time for him to stop talking. So sorry that took so long. Uh, what I hate most about when I'm trying to sleep is when the dispatcher will bother you from the Qualcomm or try to call you when you're sleeping. Yeah, I can't imagine. That would be the best way to get a good night's sleep. Thank you very much for the five beans, uh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, thank you. I used to, the last, oh, the last carrier that I worked for had the electronic logs, and they, they would try to try to wake you up in the middle of the night. Now, half the time it would be a stupid question that the dispatch just had to have the answer to because the customer would be bugging them or some bloody thing. I ended up, and it, it got so bad that I just ended up disconnecting my, my, um, ELD screen every night so it couldn't make the noise to, to wake you up but it was and they got mad at me for that because I you know then they knew I wasn't getting up at 2 a.m. to answer some stupid question and I got in trouble for that but they didn't care that they were disturbing my rest and my 10-hour break all they cared about was that I disconnected their their equipment YouTube outlaw I've never seen an an independent authority owner operator rolled on its side on a surface street. See plenty of Swiss rolled over on them though. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not the it's not the experienced guys that are having the accidents and the problems. It's it's these untrained new guys that they bring into the industry, and it's not even really their fault because they're shoved into the trucks far earlier than they should be and it's all because the big carriers want to get the trucks rolling to make more money and they rush the training and rush the training and and provide virtually nothing of any use so kelly patterson coming in with 20 bomb as well leasing a truck from a trucking company is essentially paying them to have your job thank you very much for the 20 that's right you're you're literally buying your job 
And I was distressed when I read the numbers lately uh, from Overdrive. They'd published the percentage of, of lease operators now in trucking. And it was staggering. It was a majority of truck drivers were lease operators now. And I was just, I was just heart sick when I saw that. I thought, oh, my God. My God, they've managed to get away with another scam. Here's, here's something else they're going to put money into, and I, I can't quite understand that, is they're going, to, they're going to put money into studying a miles-traveled tax system for the Highway Trust Fund to prop up the Highway Trust Fund because what they're saying is, oh, they're, they're running out of money in the Highway Trust Fund. That's because they've spent it on everything but the infrastructure, which is what it was designed to do in the first place. But they're saying, well, now, you know, we can't, we can't, get the tax money out of the fuel tax for the roads from these new electric trucks coming in because they don't buy diesel fuel. So we've got to figure out another way to tax the electric trucks. But they've already, you know, they've already got that system in place for the, the diesel fuel trucks. So how much money should it should it take to put that in into place? Not a whole lot. But you, you watch. That'll be a five-year study and cost hundreds of millions. RC Styles coming in with the 20 as well. You guys are crushing it with the donations today. Thank you for the generosity today, uh, guys. It really means a lot to us. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you. John Clamshell says, Ex expect extreme fuel price rise in 2022. With pipeline shutdown coming from Biden, railroads will charge extra 200,000 delivery per train on crude. Yeah, and, and Biden's talking about now shutting down this this line five that they refer to, which is a, a whole other different pipeline that runs through Canada and the states, and he's talking about shut, shutting that down. But, but yeah, this 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 green energy mindset that that politicians so love to latch onto now is going to cost the average family a fortune in heating and running their car. Uh, Daniel K says ATA should stand for Anti Truckers Association with all these regulations. It it oh, don't even get me started on the ATA. It's all just a big a big old boys group of of wealthy wealthy carrier owners. You know that's that's what it truly is. And they sit around and dream up ways to to hurt the little guys so they've got less competition. SoCal says there's always creative ways to extract more tax money. <laughs> from an already overtaxed citizenry. That's, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is, and that's what the politicians do. Sit around and dream up new ways to tax your butt to, to prop them up. It's, it's crazy, crazy, crazy spending. Uh, and, and Canada's as guilty of that as the states, perhaps, perhaps more so. So it's, it's outrageous up here. So there's more money they're going to waste trying to figure out how, how to tax the electric trucks, none of which are, are capable of leaving town yet. But uh, Ford F100 says, raise the minimum wage. And I agree with that. And Ontario here is raising it to $15 an hour in, in the new year. But as someone pointed out, uh, the cost of living in Toronto, they've calculated, is $22 an hour, bare minimum, bare scratch minimum to pay your bills. And they're, you know, they're going up to 15 and and, and um, our premier's reaction is, well, it's a start. And it is a start, but they've, they've got a long way to go, in, in my opinion. And, you know, the cost of everything doesn't go down. It always goes up. <laughs> Martin says, let's see the politicians drive the rigs for a bit. They wouldn't last a day. They wouldn't. No. Oh, you imagine one of those guys having to work more than eight hours a day and not have an executive lunch? Daniel Meredith, the reflection from street signs or regulation from, um, from the sunlight off, something will cause the truck to break on its own. Worst thing you can't warn the person behind you. The reflection from street signs and regulation from from the sun will cause the truck to break down i gotta think about that daniel jody spencer says if you raise the minimum wage everything else is going to go up 
so companies can still make their profits, so there's no point raising the minimum wage. Jody Spencer. But people are, Jody, people are starving to death in the meantime because they can't make enough money to pay for their groceries and their heating bill and put gas in their car. They've got to do something. So I, I, I understand what you're saying about it being a bit of a cycle, a vicious cycle. But right now, the average blue-collar worker is just too far behind. And it's not unusual to see people now working two and three jobs just just to pay the bills. And that's that's not right. That's That was not the idea of what these countries were built on. So I don't, you know, they should be taking care of their people. That should be their number one priority, and that hasn't been happening. Uh, what else we want to talk about? Here's here's one of my favorites. They're they're going to put money and, and allow under twenty one year old truck drivers to be recruited uh, by these big carriers and let them run run interstate. There's that's that's a big one right there. And the ATA will be dancing in the streets. They'll be so happy about that because they keep crying. Oh, driver shortage, driver shortage. If we could recruit the kids out of high school, it would help solve the problem. Wait a minute, i got to catch Roger here. There's no reason to raise the minimum wage. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere in Baker, California, and the Mad Greek Cafe is offering fifteen seventy-five an hour. Yeah, Baker, California. Boy, I, I remember Baker. But this, this under 21, and I was, you know, I shouldn't really be bitching about this because I was driving transports long before I turned 21. But... It boils down to, they, they have the research. They know that the most accidents are triggered by, by guys and girls, mostly guys, under the age of 21. So that's going to translate into truck accidents as well. They know this. They've got this statistically, but they're, they're going to do it anyway. And I never, had, I never had an accident when I was that age, but you know, you know some of them will. And it bothers, so I'm going to read SoCal. Roger, I've been that mad Greek cafe many times. You're right. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. Food's always great. Has, used to have a great big thermometer out front uh, at the in Baker there. But, you know, is that is that the right idea? Hooking, hooking kids that don't know any better just because they're just fresh out of high school into, into pay-by-the-mile jobs that don't pay what they should and get these kids climatized just sitting hours for free at the docks and stuff like that. I think that's I think that's sending the wrong message to kids out of high school. And it might be fine when you're single and you're you're 18 years old, but when you're 20 20 years old and you've got a, a wife and a baby already, and they're trapped into an industry by this time that's not paying what it should. That's my problem with that. But the ATA doesn't care about about that. They just care about putting people with a pulse in the seat. Daniel coming in with another five. I meant to say the reflection from the sunlight bouncing off from a vehicle or something uh. simple to cause the truck to break on its own for no reason. John Clamshell coming in with the $10 as well. The 60107 Illinois just saying thank you for all the great content that you put out. Thank you both for the donations, guys. Really appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Thank you for saying so. We appreciate it. I get it now about the reflection, Daniel. I get you. I get you. Yeah, that, that, could, that could create issues. There's all sorts of there's all sorts of problems they have yet to solve that they haven't even thought of. Daniel bringing up one of them right there. So, Trucker Raven, the key is not raising minimum wage; it's to lower the fuel prices, and everything would drop down. But since, you know, since since Biden stopped all our infrastructure and the Arizona pipeline, et cetera, there's no chance of that. Let me let me go on to a bit of a tangent about that. In 1973. Whoa! Before you do that, let me okay. just thank Jonathan for the uh, nine months of membership. Thank you very much for that, my friend. Hey, thanks, thanks, Jonathan. But this this business now with Biden shutting down all these pipelines, and he's pleading with OPEC to open up the taps so we can we can ship more oil from from the Arab states over to over to here. And that's how we got into trouble in 1973 because OPEC controlled the fuel, the amount of fuel we got, and they put the squeeze on us, and it literally shut us down across the country, both countries. 
And and that was when the U.S. determined, you know what, we got to start making our fuel in-house so they can't do that to us again. So that doesn't happen again. And here's Biden all these years later and Trudeau, same thing, shutting down the pipelines here, shutting down the manufacturings here so we can rely on OPEC for oil. Like, did they not learn from their history the problem with that? It just blows me away. Blows me away. It makes me mad. You can probably tell. Uh, something something else that they're sinking money into uh and and this is this is actually a good thing and this was something that that biden's taking credit for that trump started actually was investigating uh load brokers because there's there's been a huge problem for years with crooked load brokers and and everyone in trucking has known it for years but that that group that trooped up to Washington and met with met with Trump uh, finally brought that to the forefront, brought that to Trump, and Trump agreed to investigate it. And he started um, the Justice Department looking at these load brokers. And there was a big push to shut all that down, of course, because the load brokers didn't want that. But but Biden is going to put money back into that, and I think that's a good thing. I you know, it's one of those I'll believe it when I see it. But but I, I think that's a good thing if he actually does. I just want to butt in here a little bit um, just to comment on the poll that we posted on the trucker forums. And a little bit more than 80% out of 100 people voted they were interested in having a forum. Um, I'm a wee bit surprised by that. I thought you guys might have been burnt out from forums or tired of online forums. So um, I'm also going to post in the community tab on, on YouTube to see what folks think. And we may entertain putting up a forum on our website. And that's all. Good. Good. <laughs> YouTube Outlaw says they still have the big thermometer and the Mad Greek has expanded. He's got a place across the state line too. Boy, I haven't thought of that thermometer in years. David Brown, truckers have always had a bad reputation, but when I drove semi cross-country, I did not think that letting teenagers drive a semi is smart because they don't have the attention span. And, you know, you hate to say it, but teenagers are the most vulnerable when it comes to playing with their phones and stuff like that. That's, that's a major distraction. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's a good idea myself. And I think, you know, but though, and, and they call it, the ATA calls it the Drive Safe Act because they're trying to make the title hide the reality of it. That's, it's hilarious. But that's, that's the picture that they want to portray. I tell you. All right, we got a couple of them here. We're going to start off with Lisa Marie Coleman. Thank you very much for the $5 donation, my friend. I'm researching getting into OTR trucking. What is your advice for a newbie dealing with Biden's administration? My, my advice is, if you're getting into over-the-road trucking, get with a good carrier and let them handle the Biden administration. You just you just want to be able to focus on your job, on the driving, and making money and doing it safely. Let let the carrier handle that. And if you get with a good carrier, they'll be the perfect buffer for that. All right, thank you for the five, Lisa. Jonathan coming in with five as well. Should be a law to publicize broker profits cap them out of percentage and then impose brokerage tasks on the broker thank you very much for the five jonathan jonathan interesting concept impose a brokerage tax on the broker but they they, they need to, to do something they need to do something and what was it in transportation the other day that they were they were trying to pass or they thought was a good idea and they consulted the head of ch robinson the biggest load broker in north america they consulted him when it came to trucking because they're so powerful now and it's it's unbelievable but it's gotten it's gotten out of hand load brokers and and they take a they take a piece of the freight rate they take a huge piece of the freight rate they take as much of the freight rate as they possibly can so trucking can't afford that thank you for the five jonathan and finally kelly patterson with the five as well the most green energy we have is nuclear yeah there's there are, there are Kelly, there there are better solutions than 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 what they're entertaining these days right now. So and 
nuclear was was a good solution and and that fell out of favor here oh how many years ago now and they started shutting down those plants too but sure they were sure they were problematic if they were not patrolled and watched carefully but what isn't you know what isn't so awakened pennsylvanian if teenagers can die overseas and fight in a war they can drive trucks my grandfather drove truck and he was 14 never had an accident in his whole career i hear what you're saying i drove i drove trucks myself from the time i was 16 years old but this is this is a different generation and the motivation for us driving back then was not the motivation that the ata has for putting them in trucks now the ata's motivation is to make as much money off of them as possible and back because of the driver shortage and back then the motivation for everyone was to be as safe as they possibly could, because, especially with the young people, because they didn't know. And they were mentored and taught for months and months on how to drive. Not a three-week course and sit in, the, sit in the seat of a Swift truck. John, under 21 driving trucks with auto braking and little experience. What could, <laughs> what could be safer? It's, it's just a nightmare waiting to happen. It is, but you know. And, and and when the crash rates do go up, they'll they'll find some some excuse for it. They they won't they won't call a spade a spade. Ham is coming in with another five pounds. Honestly, I would be more obsessed with looking ahead with both hands on the wheel, and stick uh, and stick with the phone in your pocket. Thank you very much for the five pounds, Hamish. Thank you, Hamish. Appreciate it. Yep, we're still live. Now, now, granted, the infrastructure bill is called the infrastructure bill because they're promising to put in $110 billion into the roads and bridge systems. And if they truly do that, and if half of that doesn't go to line all the pockets of the state politicians that would be a good thing because there there are some states out there let's face it that are just just brutal to drive through because of the potholes and stuff like that like pennsylvania comes to mind for me and jersey i hated driving through there just because of the beating my truck would take and you know you're not compensated for that and that was one of the reasons i quit running a lot of that eastern seaboard stuff because i just you know and then and then half the roads are toll roads so you get to pay a toll going across the george washington bridge to have the hell beat out of your truck so you know i i, I hope i hope they don't divert any of that money i hope it all truly goes into the roads and the bridges and making them safer jonathan coming in with another five as well my family are liberals i'm more of a centrist myself uh, but in honor of them, I would like to rally all the people watching. Let's cheer on Brandon. <laughs> uh, uh, Jonathan, I'm with you on that. Let's go, let's go Brandon. Uh, I got to say, though, there's some funny stuff going on in the media with, with Biden there. Uh, the climate summit. Oh, God. Oh, God. We know all about that because we've got a really embarrassing prime minister. So... All right, Kathy wants me off the political talk. Uh, SoCal says he always hated running the Northeast. Yeah, me too. I, You know, at one time there was better money in it, and I did what I had to do, but I forget how many years ago now I just pulled the plug, and I, I just, I just w won't go Eastern Seaboard anymore. So, yeah, and, and I, I think there's an awful lot of guys that feel that way. Like, try to find a safe spot to sleep when you're unloading in Jersey in the morning, you know, like, geez, you, you can't find one. There isn't any. So that was, that was a lot of it too. I just, I, I gave up on the Eastern seaboard, but so if the infrastructure money really wanted to do something, they would, they would put safe parking in some of those States where you can't find any parking. So some, none of those horrible things that go on continue. They should have secure, safe parking in all major centers for trucks because they all rely on the trucks for all their stuff but 
some of those places you take your life in your hands going in there and that there's nothing fair about that um Kukality says well they addressed the parking shortage no none of this money in this infrastructure bill goes towards truck parking which is crazy trucking's trucking's biggest concern for the drivers that and the pay the parking and the pay the two biggest things for truck drivers in our industry today and uh the bill addresses neither one of those so you can tell who's who's uh helping craft the paperwork for the the infrastructure bill and it's not truck drivers grilled mortal there are a lot of potholes opening up in toronto and they're not on roads <laughs> i'm i'm not even touching that with a 10-foot pole you can't you can't lure me into that <laughs> Chicago roads will will destroy your body. It it does it 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 takes a beating on your body to travel through some of those areas because you're you're just hanging on to the steering wheel, trying to keep your spine from snapping and compressing, and that's that's hard on a driver. Fred Besmer, they sure can use some of that infrastructure money spent on the roads in Michigan. The truck is just getting a beating out here on I sixty nine in Flint. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been down that way, but. Yeah, Michigan's Michigan's got some nasty roads too. I sixty nine being among them around Flint, but you know that's that whole Flint area has kind of fallen on hard times, and I guess they they haven't chosen to to bolster up the highways around Flint just because it's you know there's no there's no infrastructure revenue going on right now. Like the the plants are all closing down and stuff. Flint's Flint's in a bad spot anymore financially. Uh, I live in PA now, and they've been working on route on Route 22 roads for the past 12 years, and the roads are still messed up. Now they're saying they need more money to fix the roads. Yeah, you can never get enough money. Give that money to the people who need it. Uh, the people are who home are homeless and starving due to COVID, and a lot of people out there suffering and losing their homes. But yet they're the ones getting punished. Daniel, good suggestion, and it's it's amazing to me how. The government can always find, even if they have to print their own money, trillions of dollars for all of these projects that they feel they want to tackle, but yet none of it ever, none of it ever bleeds down to the people that need it. Have, have you noticed that? Like the, it was the same with the COVID funding. None of it ever bled down to the people uh, that needed it the most. But you know, maybe maybe they figured those people don't vote, so that's why they ignore them. Adam Bennett coming in with another 20, my man. Thank you very much for that. Just got to Seven Feathers, I-5 exit 99 in Oregon. He wants to know if you've been there before. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I love, I really enjoy trucking in Oregon, frankly. Um, pretty, pretty country. I, I like going to Oregon. They had some, they had some goofy, uh, goofy rules for guys outside the state having to, having a permit through and stuff, but, but Yeah. Yeah, I've been all over Oregon and and re and really quite like. There's no part of Oregon I didn't like. I I used to. Have, I'm trying to think what I used to haul out of there. Believe it or not, I hauled a lot of frozen meat lasagna into Portland, Oregon, and I could usually load potatoes out of that area. So I did a lot of that, but quite liked more uh, Oregon. Grilled mortal, frost bumps in northern Quebec can put your head into the roof. Yeah, and, and northern Ontario, a eh, grilled mortal, same thing. The frost heaves can just, just about toss you right out of the truck. Certainly if you're, you're in the bunk, it'll toss you out of the bed. I can speak to uh, experience for that. But, yeah, northern Ontario, northern Quebec, where the frost heaves the pavement, brutal, brutal. Like hole, holes and dips that you could hide a Volkswagen in. <laughs> Kelly Patterson. 15 south of Sacramento is so much fun. Even, yeah, even California. It's, Shreveport is awful, according to Indiana Jack. Shreveport, Louisiana? Yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. I, I know some of the roads around Atlanta, Georgia, got to be brutal there in the last few years I was running. It's tough everywhere. Here's David Brown. Interstate 83 has been worked on for the past 10 years, and it's likely to, they'll never stop. 
just because they can't keep up with it because it's that bad. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Reese says, I throw everything on the floor before I cross I-80 through Illinois. <laughs> You might as well might as well take it down off the dash and throw it on the floor because it's going to end up there anyway. Is what he's saying. <laughs> yep. Uh, Thunderstorm eighty seven says use the empty shipping containers to house the homeless. It's you see houses popping up made out of those things, and 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 they do make homes out of those. And and some some of them I've I've seen them on the internet. Some of them are beautiful places. So. It's it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Very yeah, very resourceful. Interstate eighty in Pennsylvania, David Brown, another another famous rough road, yeah. Highway ninety nine through Bakersfield has become a nightmare lately with construction. Boy, there was there was a road I traveled a fair bit. Highway 99. All right, chat. Well, it's that time of day where we start wrapping things up. Yes. Any final notes that you want to leave us off on for today? Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining and contributing. Appreciate appreciate you guys all hopping in and, and chatting with us. I always enjoy it. We always do. Let me rephrase. Any Any topic footnotes that you want to touch on today? Well, I think we covered we covered a lot of ground. Everybody can certainly agree that the roads uh, need improving. So they, you know, everybody can agree that the 110 billion dollars on the road surfaces would be a good thing if they actually don't divert that money into the politicians' pockets. And everybody else pretty much um, agrees on the automatic braking systems being being a waste of money. And uh, everyone agreed on the fact that the truck leasing was a scam too. So I was, I was glad to see that. So we're we have we have common ground, and and most everybody in the trucking industry that drives a truck has common ground when it comes to those things. It's everybody else involved in the industry that that comes up with these wacky ideas. So it's usually the people who don't drive trucks. yeah, it's, as Kathy points out, it's the people that don't drive trucks that come up with wacky ways to spend money. What's it? Wait a second here. The Alcan Highway is smoother than a lot of the U.S. roads. <laughs> Boy, there's there's a, a switch then, because the Alcan Highway used to be famous for being a terrible road, and now and now Motorhead's saying that it's it's a better highway than a lot of the stuff in the states. Wow. Jonathan, thank you very much for another ten. This whole country's infrastructure is in dire need of a structure part. Uh, every bump is so bad that my fridge pops open and spills. I have Velcro on the door. <laughs> Jonathan, yeah. Do you remember? God, remember there a, a bridge in Minneapolis collapsed a few years ago, and they hadn't even really been looking at it until the whole thing fell into the river. People died from that, and that was when they started paying infra infrastructure attention, like when they started going, geez, maybe we ought to look at some of these bridges. And they, you know... They wait till one falls in and kills a few people, and then they, oh, it might be a problem. Grilled mortal, going to Vancouver with a huge magnet, fishing for sea cans in Alpha. <laughs> they, had a, they had a big container ship spill off the coast of Vancouver Island, and it's a, it's a mess. I don't know if you've seen the, the sea containers. What a, just a ton of pollution from that. Just, just that one ship, and it's, it's, it's a disaster. <laughs> going with a magnet, go fishing with a magnet. Anyway. All right. So what can we expect for upcoming this week? Upload. Ah, uh, we have a good video for you this week. Every video is a good video. Every video is a good video, but this one is, this one's special. special. It's close to my heart. It's called The Dark and Dirty Side of Becoming a Truck Driver. So tune in for that Friday. It's going to be a smoker. Other than that, <laughs> we're gonna yeah we're gonna ruffle a few feathers shall we say to to put it politely but so i like those i like those videos when we when we ruffle a few feathers so anyway all right chat so thank you for everyone who came to the stream today everyone who donated participated uh once again uh we did have a poll up about the trucker forum um i guess we'll we'll put a note up next week about where we plan on going with that if you want to have us
post a trucker for them, be sure to let us know. Let us know in the YouTube comments, stream, wherever you can reach us at. And uh, we'll get that made up in the next little bit. Uh, other than that, thank you all for participating today. Uh, Lisa Marie Coleman coming in with the last second donation of the $5. Can you own your own rig and still be a company driver? Technically not, no. I understand, Lisa, what you're, what you're saying there. Can you have the best of both worlds? But, but no. No, sadly, it, it just doesn't work that way. There are too many, too many areas of conflict. When it comes to you know benefits and how the labor board sees you and classifies you that type of thing, but no, I understand I understand your your question, but the answer sadly is no. All right, chat, and uh, just like and grilled mortal does agree, dark and smelly does sound like an interesting description for an upcoming video, <laughs> or maybe he was describing our host today. We don't know. <laughs> Whoa. Anyways. Whoa. Thank you very much for everyone who came out today, donated, participated. We'll see you same time next week. Thank you for joining us once again. Take care. Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. We'll see you safely on the backhaul. Good night, everybody.